Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Gonna wait a minute before we get started and see if anybody's going to jump on this morning. Good to see you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. couple of people starting to join us this morning, so we're just going to hang out for a couple of moments and make sure that uh, we have a connection and sound and all of those sort of good things. So, Good morning. Morning, Denise and Wendy and Donna. I'm sure there's some others who are here as well, but uh, I saw your names on the screen, so I can call you out if you're watching. Go ahead and drop a good morning in the comments so we know that you're, you're viewing and you're watching. I just had one of my kids on my Facebook page making sure that we have some uh, sound and that actually went live this morning, so it's good to, good to see you. Hi, Rhonda. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. good to see you. If you love the snow, today's a good day. If you love football, today's a good day. If you don't love snow or football, hey, it's Sunday. You should love that. So hopefully there's something everybody can enjoy this morning. <laughs> morning, Steve. Good to see you. Good to have you here. We're just going to wait a minute or two. Um, normally we have some worship going and people are jumping on and so uh, we don't have that this morning. So we're just going to have some casual chit chat for a couple of minutes and then we're going to jump in. Morning, Marion and Vicki. It's good to see everybody today. Even though I can't see you, you can see me, but it's good to have you. Good to have you today. Just monitoring my uh, comments feed real quickly. I can do that when I'm on my laptop and that's what I'm doing. So. Um, if you're joining us and you haven't dropped, dropped a uh, hello in the comments section, take a moment and do that. We'd appreciate it. Um, Dave, good to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. We'll wait another 30 seconds or so, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So grab your warm beverage. I have mine with me this morning. Um, not quite as chilly out as it was last week when it was snowing, but obviously cold enough for snow. So get your warm beverage or uh, something to drink, and we're going to gather this morning. Good morning, Donna. Good to see you. Thanks for watching, Donna Fry. Good to have you today. Hope everybody's feeling well. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We've been on for about three and a half minutes, and so we'll go ahead and get started, and hopefully some others will join us if they're able and when they're able. If you have jumped on, feel free to... Uh, got, got my OJ. All right, Dave, that works. If you don't you don't have the coffee, you have the OJ. That works for me. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Just going to start with a couple of announcements and a couple of reminders for you, uh, and, then, and then we'll get into the message for today. So... Morning, Terry. Good to have you here. Thanks for putting the comment in there. Uh, in the in the title up where we went live, you'll notice that there is a link to the website for Connect Card. If you have a prayer request, or if you're catching us today for the first time, we'd love for you to go in there, fill out that prayer request, or fill out that Connect Card at the bottom of the comment section. You can put a prayer request in there if you if you have one, and I would love to connect with you today. There's also a link in the top for giving. So if you'd like to give online, if you're able to give online, we certainly appreciate it. You can go to our uh, website, lifespringlits.com. And when you get there, you can click on the give tab, which is all the way on the right hand side at the top of the page. So we'd love to have you uh, give if you're able to do that online. Otherwise, you can mail uh, your, your tithe, your offering, your gift to the church, 490 West Lincoln Avenue, Lititz. And uh, if not otherwise, hold on to it and bring it with you the next time that you uh, are in person. So thank you guys so much for your flexibility and your um, 
willingness, your prayers, uh, our annual business meeting was scheduled for today. It was postponed from last week until today. Of course, it's snowing. I have no clue what we would have done had we been scheduled to meet in person Sunday, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Snow is never a pastor's friend. Uh, I saw some uh, conversation on a pastor's page that I'm part of, and somebody posted that last night. How many others get anxiety uh, when you get Saturday night into Sunday morning snow? And uh, most of the pastors were saying just how they, they don't mind snow other days, but they don't like it on Saturday night. So, But anyway, our annual business meeting is being, is being rescheduled uh, until Sunday, February 28th. Uh, my family and I are quarantined right now. We'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but because of that, I, I would like to and, and almost need to be in person to be able to do that business meeting. And so we have decided, we, meaning me and the board, we did a Zoom on Friday morning just to sift through and sort through some things and our monthly uh, board meeting. But we've decided to postpone uh, that annual business meeting until until Sunday, the February 28th. So no details other than that change. Uh, everything that we have been announcing and talking about remain the same. We're just going to move that to uh, the 28th. So just as we get started, uh, in case you're unaware, and uh, for those of you that are aware, maybe just a quick update. Earlier this week, one of my kids did test positive for COVID, and because of that, my family and I are quarantined now for a long time. And uh, shorter time if nobody gets any symptoms and unfortunately will be extended if other people in the home do get some symptoms. So uh, that child is feeling well and doing well. The kids are feeling well, all of them. Um, we found out on Friday morning uh, that that test result came in positive. And so um, everybody's feeling well, except for my wife. My wife is not feeling well. She, um, Friday evening, late Friday evening, uh, started developing a few symptoms, went to bed early, woke up yesterday morning and uh, not feeling real well. Got up out of bed and, and started feeling really well. For those of you that were at our prayer service, she had she was able to attend that and felt pretty good. But by about noontime, she really um, just got hit hard. Um, and so she is still feeling pretty lousy today. And uh, so if you just continue to keep her in prayer, uh, we would really appreciate that rest of our family as we go through this time, uh, just that God will keep us safe and healthy and, and bring healing touch to my wife, because we're, we're believing that today. We're, we're believing for a miraculous healing for her uh, and for protection for our family. So um, because we found out on Friday, uh, we did make a, a couple of calls to see if we could get some folks in to do live service today, but with it being such late notice, we couldn't get all the pieces together, so the board and I just decided that we would do this service today, just do it like this. And uh, so a little different, but it's certainly good to be able to be with you um, and, and still be able to worship with you today. So um, anyway, we're going to do that. Our plan, our hope, is to resume in-person services next Sunday morning. I do want you to know that while I did have a child that contracted COVID, it is not contact trace back to the church. Um, this was outside of the church, and that child has not been in the church since they had come in contact. So our church is still safe. Uh, it is still clean. It is still sanitized. Uh, and so I, I praise the Lord for that. And certainly a shout out to Terry and her cleaning crew for, for keeping us safe and doing such a wonderful job. So we do want to assure you, uh, we have not had any cases in the church. We praise God for that. And that remains true. Uh, it's just that because it was Friday that we found out, it was just short notice to get all the pieces together. So again, we are putting the pieces in place for an in-person service next Sunday. I have to give a quick testimony, though. In the first week of January, uh, I reached out to Juan and Shirley Ocasio, who are missionaries, and uh, they were scheduled to come, I think, the second week of January. And it just didn't work out. It just didn't feel like that was the right time. So I reached out to them and said, hey, can I, can I just be a huge uh, pain, and can we reschedule that service? And so the, the first week of January, we rescheduled them to come Sunday, February 14th. And so we already have a speaker lined up for next Sunday morning. So uh, I praise God for that because he knows everything. He knows things that we don't know. And um, so even in the midst of, ah, my family uh, has, has contracted COVID, um, well, I praise God for his provision and for looking out. So we're, we're getting the final pieces together for an in-person service for you for next Sunday morning. We'll keep you updated throughout the week. 
uh, and then uh, we're, we're expecting to continue to provide those live services for you uh, from here on out. So uh, we won't be there the next two Sundays, the 14th or the 21st, because of uh, quarantine. We're hoping and believing to be able to be there then on Sunday, February 28th. But we are going to continue to work. We are going to continue um, to serve and, and love and pray. And so please reach out if you need something this week. Uh, I, I'm still going to be working every day and, and uh, all of that. So we're still here. So call, text, email. Uh, I can do Zoom appointments uh, or anything like that. And so we just want to just want to let you know that you, you don't have to uh, keep your virtual distance, you can still reach out if there's a need or concern, something like that. We've had some meetings scheduled this coming week, and so all of those will just shift to Zoom. Uh, we can do that. We can be flexible. So I want to get into uh, something that the, the Lord put on my heart to share with us. We've been talking about foundations uh, the last couple of Sundays, and uh, the, just the firm foundation, the, the rock of Jesus Christ being that firm foundation. And uh, we've been based out of Matthew chapter number uh, six and seven is where our texts have come. And that's not going to change today. Uh, in Matthew chapter number seven, verse number 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And my challenge for us, my question for us as we gather here today is, uh, are you hearing the words and are you putting them into practice? That, that's, that's the question that I pose for each one of us today. Are you hearing God's word and are you putting them into practice? Because if you're doing those two things, Jesus says you're building your house on the firm foundation. So let, let's jump in this morning. Uh, in, in Matthew chapter number six, last week we talked about fasting as we were getting ready to uh, have our week of prayer and fasting. And I'll touch on that week in, in just a couple of minutes. But we talked about uh, in Matthew chapter number six and verses 16 to 18, where Jesus talks about fasting. And there's three truths in chapter number six from, from verse number two to 18 that Jesus hits home on. It says, when you give, and when you pray, and when you you fast. You know, just like everything else in Scripture, when we follow what the Lord is telling us to do, things happen, right? When, when we follow what the Scripture lays out for us, when we are in the Word and when we're following that, something happens. It, just like when Jesus, in the, in the New Testament, when we read about Him going to different places, different communities, um, even the ones that weren't physically touched or physically healed, it says that they left amazed, they left uh, in awe, that they left recognizing who he was, even if they didn't believe. And so when you and I uh, get into God's word and we start following what is laid out in God's word, then things are going to happen. Things are going to shift. Things are going to move. And, and the title of my message today is Breakthrough. It's Breakthrough. Because we've been talking about prayer and we've been talking about fasting. At some point, we're going to get into talking about giving because Jesus says, when you give, when you pray, when you fast, these are the things that he commands us to do. These are the things that he instructs us to do. Um, he, he desires for us to walk through them. And when we do them, things happen. Breakthrough happens. Chains break. Uh, 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 relationships are, are mended. Now, that doesn't mean that we, there isn't some work for us in some of those things, because God does call us to that in, in certain points. But listen, when we're obedient to the Word, when we're obedient to what it says, then we can take heart and we can believe, because Jesus said it himself, that um, the things are going to happen. And so when you give, when you pray, when you fast. I want to look at a couple of scriptures today um, where the it talks about breakthrough. And, and not all of these scriptures you might recognize as breakthrough in the moment, but as we as we go through them, I, I, I know, I trust that you'll see the breakthrough uh, that is happening because the Lord is breaking through some things right now at LifeSpring. I know he's doing it in your personal life. Uh, I believe he's doing it in the life of your family unit, whatever that looks like. And I believe that he's doing it in our corporate church body. He's breaking through some things. And I believe that's birthed out of our week of prayer and fasting that we just came through. But I also believe it's birthed because you and I are going to take the things that we've learned this past week through our time of prayer and fasting, and we're going to put them into practice in our daily lives. Uh, if you have a Bible and you're 
uh, e-version or tree version, you can turn over with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 8. And if you don't have one, then write that reference down and, and uh, you can look at it later. But in John chapter number 8, <clears throat> in verses number 31 and 32, John chapter number 8, verses 31 and 32, Jesus says this, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you're really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be set free? All of us want to be set free. But it requires something. And when we follow through the what's listed in the scriptures for you and I, to, what, what the Lord asks us to do, then truth happens, freedom happens, breakthrough happens. It's all right here in the word of God. Let's, let's pick that apart. Jesus said, if you, hold to my if you hold to my teachings, you are my disciples. Let's stop there for a moment. If you hold to my teachings, not just if you read your Bible, not just if you know my teachings, when that word hold in there, if you hold to my teachings, that means if you believe them, if you allow them to come into your innermost being, if you hold on to my teachings, but then it also doesn't mean just to get them in, but it also means that that propels us forward. So if I hold on to it, if I embrace it, if I walk in it, if I hold on to his teachings, his word says that I'm his disciple. I'm his true follower. That's what a disciple is. It's a follower. It's a, it's a true follower. Follower. Uh, maybe you follow a certain uh, uh, person, but really we ought to be following Jesus, right? Um, but he says, uh, if you hold to my teachings, if you accept it in your innermost part and you let it operate in you and through you, then you're my disciple. And if you're my disciple, you'll know the truth. If you know it, if you accept it, if you live it out, you're his disciple. If you're his disciple, because you know it, you accept it, you're getting it in you, then you become then you then you have the ability to know the truth. The truth. Not a truth not someone else's truth, not the government truth, not the anybody other else's truth, this truth. This is the truth that will set you free. What does that freedom mean? That freedom means that we break all the bondages that the enemy tries to put in our life, all the roadblocks, all the road bumps, all of the distractions, all of the pain. Listen, those are very real things, certainly not trying to come against that. We walk through some very difficult circumstances but the truth of God's word will set you free. I would be lying if I told you that uh, when we receive the news of uh, a positive test on Friday, I would be lying if I told you that it didn't shake me, it didn't affect me, it didn't bother me at all. It, it shook us for a couple of moments. We were expecting negative report. We had been praying that way. Uh, we were believing for a negative report. And so when it came back positive, we were like, what? You know, I'm just being very real for a moment. And sometimes there are things in life, whether it's whether it's that or, or something that else that you walk through, there are those moments where we're caught off guard. There are those moments where we um, where we are, are taken back. We, we have to catch our breath. We have to uh, take a moment and just kind of wrap our head around what has happened. There's nothing wrong with that. It's where you choose to stay after that that determines whether you're a disciple of Christ living in his truth or whether you allow um, the circumstances of this world to put you in bondage, to take your mind captive. And so uh, we, we, we did, we were, we were shaken for a moment. And then we thought, you know what? One of the first things that uh, my wife said is she said, we will find the positive in this. We will find the blessing in this. There, there is something wrapped up in this that the Lord wants to do whether it's for our family, whether it's for that child, whether it's for the church. There, there's something in here that's wrapped up that we will uncover because God will take something that we think is bad or that is bad and he'll turn it around to receive the glory and the honor. 
And so we decided at that moment, we just stopped and we prayed. We prayed for right attitude. We prayed for um, uh, our minds and our hearts to be set on him. We prayed for healing uh, for the child who had received that. And we prayed for protection over our family. And we purposed ourselves from that moment, we are going to find the blessing in this. Because while we don't believe God caused this, we don't believe God put this on us, God could have allowed it to happen so that he would receive glory and honor. I always go back to that story in the Gospel of John. I believe it's chapter number four. I'm just going to turn there for a second. I'm not going to read it. Um, I'm sorry, it's chapter number nine. I always go back to that story because it's the man who's born blind. And everybody says, uh, was it his parents that sinned? Was it him that sinned? And Jesus says, no, this happened so that the Son of Man might be glorified. And I believe that in every circumstance, in every situation, God can receive glory and honor. And so going back to John 8, the verses, he says, if you hold on to my teachings, you're to my disciples. And when you're my disciples, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. There will be bondages that will be broken. There will be breakthrough that happens when you know the truth because that truth will set you free. And I'm believing today uh, and tomorrow and the next day, we are purposing ourselves that God is bringing the breakthrough in, in my life, in our life as a family, in the life of the church and in your life. We're believing that because you are a professing believer that means you're a disciple of Christ. And when you're a disciple of Christ, you'll know the truth. And when you know that truth, you will start living it out. And when we live it out, church, that's when God does stuff. Amen? Amen. In the Old Testament, in the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter number 54, uh, Isaiah chapter number 54, there's another portion of scripture here. Isaiah is talking to uh, the Israelites who are in captivity right now. They are in captivity uh, when this portion of Isaiah is written. And uh, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but uh, at the beginning of the chapter, uh, the Lord through Isaiah is talking about uh, he is going to, uh, even though it looks bad, even though it is um, it doesn't look good, it, it's all those things, and he sets that up in chapter number 40, 53, but in chapter number 54, he says, don't be afraid. You don't fear the disgrace. Uh, your, your, um, the places of your tent are about to enlarge. Uh, he tells them in verse number two, enlarge your place of your tent, stretch out your tent curtains wide, do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. And he goes on and talks about the blessing that is about to come. It's not a blessing for that moment. It's a blessing that's about to come if they remain faithful to the Lord. But all the way down in verses number 16 and 17, he says this. See, it is I, this is God speaking through Isaiah. He said, see, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into, into flame and forges a weapon for its work. And it is I, take note of what he says here in, in uh, the end of verse number 16, Isaiah 54. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. It is I who created the destroyer to wreak havoc. But then he goes on in verse number 17 and he says, No weapon forged against you will prevail. You will refute, which means silence, every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage, heritage of the servants of the Lord, and it is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. He says, I'm the one that has given the Babylonians, I'm the one who's given them the power, I'm the one that's given them the ability, I'm the one that has allowed this to happen. But this is not to your death, this is not to your end. Enlarge your camps, throw your doors wide open, there is blessing coming, there is breakthrough coming if you'll keep the course. And I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm here to tell you today, that as you and I take the things that God has showed us during this week of prayer and fasting, if we take those things and we put them into place, there is tent enlargement coming in your life. Uh, there is blessing coming into your life. God is going to do it because his word says he'll do it. Amen. Amen. He says he'll do it. 
He says he'll do it. And so I just want to encourage you with that this morning. No weapon formed against you will prevail. When you keep the Lord first and foremost, when you are his disciple, when you hold on, when you allow his word in you to take residence in you and to live it out, the truth will set you free. The truth will break all of the demonic strongholds. The, the truth will break what the enemy has tried to shackle. The truth will break uh, what, what the enemy is trying to mess up and destroy. In the book of James, back in the New Testament, in the book of James, you can turn there, chapter number one, or at least write the scripture down if you don't have a Bible with you, and you can go and read it later. James chapter number one, reading verses two, three, and four. James write this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Sometimes when difficult things happen in our life, we're ready to throw up our hands, we're ready to throw in the towel. God must not care. He must not be watching. He must not be. He must not be. He must not be. That's the wrong perspective, church. That's the wrong perspective. He says, consider it joy when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. I think of back when I used to um, you know, in high school, I was a, an athlete. When I was in college, I was an athlete. And we used to go through, through some pretty uh, intense and pretty strict training. But the point of that was probably many things, but one of it was to build perseverance. It was to build lung capacity. It was to uh, build muscle strength. Why? So that we could endure when it, could be, when it got to be game time, so that we wouldn't get tired in the first quarter or the first period of the match or uh, in the race that I was running. It was to build endurance, to build a pers the ability to persevere when it got hard or when it hurt or when it got tough. And so, um, you know, that's not just a... a, a a concept that's true for our physical bodies, but it's a concept that's true in our personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, when trials must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Church, this is the recipe that we're seeing in the scriptures for breakthrough. This is the pressing in and keep moving forward that we have been talking about. Now, I want to talk about our week of prayer and fasting for just a moment. Uh, I hope that you were able to participate in some way, shape, or form. I, I've been hearing some, um, some, some testimonies uh, of people, whether it's at the prayer meetings as we've been gathering. We, we gathered this past Monday, Wednesday, and, and yesterday via Zoom, uh, Monday and Wednesday because of the weather, yesterday because we're, we're in quarantine. But uh, we've been gathering, and we've been hearing some great testimonies. Look, this is what God's been doing. This is what God's been showing me. This is how God's been stretching me. This is how God showed up. This is how, and, and it's just been fantastic. But here's what I want to encourage you with. Don't wait until our next time of prayer and fasting to continue prayer and fasting. Take what God has showed you, take what God has put on your heart, take what God has birthed inside of you and keep walking in it today and tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year. Take, take those things that he's showing you and make them, incorporate them, purpose yourself to have them part of your daily walk with Christ. Your part of, of, of who you are now. Uh, I love times of prayer and fasting because it, it, it takes no matter where I am spiritually, even if I'm everything's clicking and things are going well, if I'm in a dry spot and I'm struggling to hear the voice of the Lord, I always grow. I am always stretched and, and God always shows up in some capacity, big or small. He always shows up. He's faithful to do that. So I'm encouraging us um, individually and as a church body, uh, yesterday's prayer point was boldly advance. And, and that's in a lot of different areas, a lot of different meanings. But I want you to boldly advance in this new found relationship, in these not, not found relationship, but this deeper, more intimate relationship. I want you to boldly advance in the things that God has showed you and the things that God has uh, kind of birthed in your heart or solidified in your heart. Incorporate those, you know, uh, 
my, my wife shared at the end of the prayer meeting yesterday, she said, you know, if, the, if you feel like I should fast, you know, we were talking about King's stomach for a couple minutes yesterday. <clears throat> I shared about that last Sunday. If you missed that, you can go back and watch it. And as we were preparing for the fast, King's stomach and the, and the throne that he sits on and the reign that he has in our lives. Uh, and somebody had shared a testimony and, and said, well, listen, I had, I had to speak to King's stomach a couple of times. I, I needed to tell him to knock it off and to calm down during the week because he was trying to disrupt my fasting time. Listen, if you feel the Lord calling you to fast, you don't have to wonder if that's God. Because in our natural bodies, who wants to deprive ourselves? In our natural <clears throat> way of thinking, who, who wants to starve yourself? Who, who wants to separate yourself from, from food, from chocolate, or from the goodies, or, or whatever it is? Nobody wants to do that. So if you're feeling this draw to fast, if you're feeling this draw for deeper times of prayer, for even more times of prayer, uh, that's of God. And so we, we want to encourage you, walk in that, incorporate that, be purposeful in setting those times uh, apart. There are times where I might fast by myself. There are times when my wife might fast by herself. But there are purposeful times where we have said, we're going to do this together. Uh, and so, you know, you have to be purposeful in making them. And, and there, everything on the calendar, everything in our lives contradicts when a good time to fast is. But when God calls you to do it, it's a good time to do it. And so we just want to encourage you with that. You know, if you're struggling... Um, of hearing from God, go to the scriptures. Go to the scriptures. Listen, the, the Bible tells us that the word is alive and it's active. And so um, it's not just another book you pick up and read, but if you get in there, if you, if you can find it in the Bible, then God's telling you to do it. And so you don't have to question it. I have one more portion of scripture that I want to share with you today. Uh, and that's in the book of Philippians. So if you're still in James, just go forward a couple of books. Uh, you'll, you'll come to Hebrews and uh, and then you'll come to uh, Philemon, Titus, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 1, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, Colossians, and then Philippians. I completely cheated. I read all the, the, the books there. I didn't know that backwards by memory, so I have to true confession there. Philippians chapter number three. This is one of our scripture verses that was part of our, our prayer theme for yesterday. But I want to kind of bring us to, towards a close by sharing this with you. This is Paul writing to the church at Philippi, giving them their instructions. And he says this, you know, the, the letter is, is coming towards a close. But in chapter number three, uh, in verse number 12, he says, not that I have already obtained all of this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You know, as I read that verse, just, just reading it, not, not to prep a sermon, not to share with you this morning. As I read that verse, there's two things that stick out to me right away. In verse number 12, it says, not that I have already obtained this. You know, quickly, I'm like, what is this? You know, what, what is the this? And then in verse number 13, it says, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. For some reason, those two uh, words just jump out at me. And so I want to share with you for, for just a moment. What is the this and what is the it in those two verses? And in order to get the definition, in order to know what Paul is talking about, you have to go back to the beginning of chapter number 3 and read verses 1 through 11. So I'm going to summarize it very quickly uh, with one word. And then you can go back and read it later. The this and the it is Christ's likeness. The likeness of Christ. Paul's telling the church in verses 1 through 11 that you and I need to be Christ-like in everything that we do. He says in verse 2, watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those manipulators of the flesh. And he goes on to talk about it. Anyone thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. And he talks about just his background and his history, which just that in and of itself would, would in the natural, elevate him to be someone who people should listen to. He had a very extensive 
um, <coughs> excuse me, education. He had a very extensive education, and so they're probably, you know, Paul ranked right up there with people who just knew a lot of stuff about what the Old Testament said, what the law had to say. So Paul's saying, if there's anyone who can boast in their knowledge, it's, it's me, but he's not. He says in verse 7, whatever was to my profit, I consider it for the loss, for the sake of the cross, for the sake of, of Christ. And so he just finishes in the last couple verses. But I, I want to reread Philippians 3, 12 to 14, and I'm going to take out the this and the it, and I'm going to insert it with Christ-likeness, because that's what you and I are called to. You and I are called to be like Christ. That, that should be the desire of your heart, that your heartbeat should beat so that God make me more like you. Make me more like Jesus. Make me more into the man or the woman or the boy or the girl or the person that you have designed and desired me to be. And so, Paul, we would read it like this. Not that I have already obtained Christ-likeness or have been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that, meaning Christ-likeness, <clears throat> for which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Meaning, listen, he, he made us his own. And because he did that for us, we ought to pursue him in Christ-likeness. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of Christ-likeness. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and train, extrain towards what is ahead. What's ahead? Christ-likeness, because we should have that pursuit. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What's our prize? Eternity with Jesus. Eternity with God in heaven, reunited with our maker. But listen, there's blessings bestowed here on earth to those that follow him now. So we don't accept Christ and put it into Christian cruise control. We continue to pursue him. We continue to uh, know who he is. We go back to John 8. If you know if you hold on to my teaching, if you know it, if you accept it and then live it out, you're my disciple. If you're my disciple, you know the truth and that truth will set you free. Don't give up. Keep pressing on. As we were praying yesterday in our time of prayer, um, as we were praying yesterday in our time of prayer, uh, I prayed this prayer. This is just a small piece of the prayer. But I said, Lord, this setback is not a setback. It's a setup. This is not a setback. It's a setup. One of the things that I personally struggled with on Friday was, Lord, we're in a week of prayer and fasting. We have called the church to do this. Uh, you know, we're believing for breakthrough. We're believing for miracles. We're, we're believing for all this. And COVID? Really? You know, I, I'm just being honest. I, that was part of my taking my step back and thinking, what? But the Lord showed me after my wife said, no, we're going to pull the blessing out of this. We're going to pull the positive out of this. This is not a setback. This is a setup. This is a setup for what God wants to do. God is going to work. God is going to be glorified. God is going to move. God is breaking chains God is breaking barriers. God is breaking strongholds. God is breaking off everything that doesn't belong in your life, the life of your family, and the life of our church. And I believe it in Jesus' name. I believe it in Jesus' name. Maybe you were thinking, oh, you know, we, we have this week of prayer and fasting. Now in-person services were canceled. Oh, what a setback. Not a setback, a setup. It's a setup for what God wants to do. I'm telling you, you, we've got to change our minds. We've got to change our perspectives. We've got to keep our eyes fixed on him, our heart fixed on him. This is a set up, not a setback. And I'm going to pray that here in a few minutes as we get ready to close our time together. My family contracting COVID is not a setback. It's a setup for what God wants to do in our life. Canceling in-person church service today was not a setback. Uh, for our church family, it was a set up for what God is doing and will continue to do at Life Spring. Whatever uh, you know has maybe happened to you during this week, and you thought, "Lord, I'm praying and I'm fasting. How can this happen?" I'm telling you, it's not a setback; it's a setup. 
It's a setup for what God's going to do. I'm not here to be your cheerleader. I'm not here to try to convince you that the bad thing that happened isn't real or you should just push it aside. I'm sure it's very bad. I'm sure it's very real. But I'm telling you, it's not a setback. It's a setup for what God wants to do. It's a setup for God being glorified. It's a setup. Because God's going to work. He's going to move. He's staying true. He's staying faithful to his word. He's not going to change. He's going to bring it to pass. He's going to see you through your storm. He's going to break that addiction. He's going to restore your marriage. He's going to restore the relationship. He's going to bring financial blessing. He's going to do all the things that you're desiring him to do. It is not a setback. It's a set up for him to be glorified. And I want you to grab that this morning. I want you to receive that this morning. I want you to believe that this morning. Can you say amen? Amen. Listen, we're going to get ready and, and close uh, with a word of prayer. I have a quick announcement to give you after we pray, but I want you to just take a moment, just, just 30 seconds of quiet before I pray. And I want you to offer a prayer to the Lord. I, I want you just to beginning to thank him and praise him. One of the things that uh, I've been very purposeful over the last almost 48 hours is saying, Lord, as I be go to him in prayer, whether I'm praying with my wife for her healing or whether we're just praying at the meal or whether we're doing, uh, I said, Lord, you're worthy of praise. No matter what happens in my life, no matter what happens in my family's life, no matter who gets sick or if, and listen, we're not speaking that, but I mean, no matter what happens, God, you're worthy. You're worthy of our praise. So you begin to offer that praise. You begin to thank him. You begin to praise him right now. I want you to give you like 30 seconds to do that. And then I'm going to close us in a word of prayer. So you, you just begin to thank him. Oh, hallelujah, Father. We worship you, Lamb of God. You're worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Come on. Praise him, church. Out loud. Do it out loud. Praise him out loud. We're Pentecostal. We're not scared to be a little loud. We're not scared to be a little loud. There's a couple of you watching uh, on the same device, all of you, just take a moment, even if it's a whisper, and just pray out loud. Pray with your audible voice right now. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what I'm going through, Lord, you're worthy. No matter what I'm going through, Lord, you're worthy. No matter the pain, the difficulty, the uncertainty, God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Jesus, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. Now, Father, I just thank you for our time together this morning, our time in your word, our time that we've been able to just purpose ourselves to sit at your feet, at the feet of Jesus, at the foot of the cross this morning, in your word, learning, growing. Father, thank you for the word that you put on my heart this morning to share with your people. God, we are blessed because you are moving and working at Life Spring. You are doing um, things behind the scene that we know nothing about, and you're moving in our corporate gatherings. I feel your presence this morning. Uh, and while we're not physically in the same location, we are gathered together. And so you said where two or three are gathered, I am there in the midst. You're with us. You're moving in our hearts this morning as the, your word is coming forth. You are, you are doing things. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. <clears throat> when we're in your presence and we're seeking you, you have to move. It's your character. It's your nature. And I come against anything that the enemy is doing right now in the life of everyone who's watching this, whether it's live or they're catching this later. Father, I come against it. Lord, whatever might be deemed as a setback, Father, we speak as a set up in Jesus' name, that you'll be glorified through everything that's said and done in our lives, that you'll be glorified through every storm that we walk through, that we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor because we can't walk through them alone. You're the one that takes our hand. You're the one that guides us. You're the one that leads us. You're the one that strengthens us. You're the one that gives us the ability to put the next foot in front of the next, to, to put one foot in front of the next. Father, you're the one that empowers us to do that. You bring the victory. And when something that we might deem defeat happens in our life, you've not left us. You've not forsaken us. You are right there so that you can help us, you can push us, you can pull us, you can get us through, and so that you can receive the glory and the honor that you're due. Father, I pray today that you will help us to pursue Christ-likeness, that you will help us to not consider ourselves to take a hold. We have not arrived. We are not perfect. We are not Christ-like. We are on that journey of becoming Christ-like 
as we get into your word, as we seek your face in prayer, as we fast, as we give, as we do the things that you have asked us to do. We are in pursuit of Christ-likeness. And so as we do that, would you help us, Lord, forget what is behind, the mistakes, the, the past bondages, the past struggles, the past failures. Would you help us to forget what is behind and would you help us strain toward what is ahead, keeping our eyes and our hearts fixed on you at all times. Lord, we press on toward the goal to win the prize for which you have called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. Father, I speak and I declare breakthrough in the lives of each and every person Father, not because we are worthy, not because we deserve it, but because your son Jesus is worthy and your son Jesus has enabled it to happen. He has paid the ultimate price through his death on Calvary's cross, the shedding of his blood and his res resurrection three days later. So Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor. And Lord, that setback is not a setback. It's a set up that you might receive glory and honor. We'll give you thanks. We'll give you praise. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we are scheduled. Uh, I mean, it's so good. I feel the presence of the Lord this morning. It is so good to worship with you today through the preaching of God's Word. I want to encourage you to um, to take some time, if you haven't already today, and you know, get into the presence of the Lord. Maybe put on some worship music. Um, spend some time just praying to, to the Lord this morning, thanking Him for His Word today, thanking Him for what He's doing, what He has done, and, and praise Him for what He's about to do. Uh, because if you believe that the set, what looks to be a setback is really a set up, then we know he's going to move, he's going to work, and he's going to be faithful to it. So we can praise him. Say, Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're about to do in this situation. Uh, I want to encourage you, this Wednesday, uh, we are scheduled to have another prayer service. And so we're just going to do that by Zoom. Uh, I know it sounds crazy, but our last three prayer services have been Zoom, and there has been a presence of the Lord at those services. So I want to encourage you, 7 o'clock this Wednesday, there'll be a, a link that's posted on this page uh, earlier that afternoon. I want to invite you to join us and, and just come, and we're going to seek the face of God together as we move forward. God bless you all. We love you. We covet your prayers. We thank you for praying. And uh, we'll be in communication throughout the week on the status of uh, next Sunday morning service and uh, some different, you know, health updates. I, I know some of you have already reached out. And we appreciate your love, your care, and your concern. So we'll keep you updated throughout the week. Again, we're here. If you need anything, please reach out. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we hope to connect with you again soon. Take care. We'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.